Alex, for you, how do you define a series of artworks? It's fairly broad, but I think it's as long as it has a cohesive narrative or a cohesive methodology throughout. And I know that's a very broad way to put it, but I think it's a, it can be a lot of things as long as it has that cohesion in it. And Lauren, why would you want to do a series? What role does that have if you're a professional artist or if you're an art school student? Why would you want to do a series? I think doing singular one and done pieces can feel very surface level sometimes and it may take a while to parse something to really figure out what it's all about and doing a series can help you with that researching delving process and i would also say that you guys have heard me say before many many times here at art prof how important it is to experiment try all different types of supplies learn how to draw many different types of things but I think for a lot of people, at a certain point, you start to feel really scatterbrained. And for me, at least, the purpose of a series is to really do a deep dive, like really spend time with something that's substantial. Like, Alex, we're looking at this series that you did a little ways back based on Murder on the Orient Express. Why did you decide to create that series? What purpose did that series serve for you? So for me, it was the first level purpose was for my portfolio. Um, it was to mimic the kind of illustration work that I would want to be hired for. So selecting a, I, I deemed Agatha Christie as kind of contemporary, like young adult, early adult reader level. And I wanted to illustrate that like a chapter book. Um, and our, even in my own personal work, that's how I love to do it is to base on existing stories. Now, Lauren, if you're a fine artist, how does a series of artworks actually play into being a professional fine artist? I think that series can become really important when you are thinking about maybe presenting a show at a gallery, like a solo show. And those don't necessarily, we don't necessarily talk about them as series as we talk about them as a body of work, but it kind of has similarities in that everything needs to be cohesive. It needs to show that it's all from one artist. You need to have a voice and doing things in a series can be very good for creating that voice. Yeah. And I think that definitely if you are shopping around for gallery representation, you have to have a cohesive series of works. You can't just walk in and be like, I got three paintings, check me out. Like you have to have something that feels mature, that feels really developed. So it's an important part of your maturity, I think, as an artist. Now, I always think about a good series of artworks, like a good TV show, for example, Cheers, we were talking about this show earlier. If you guys are younger than the age of 40, maybe you don't know what Cheers is, but it was a landmark TV show and it was based on a bar in Boston. It's a really simple premise, but Alex, why do you think that was a good premise for a TV show? Yeah, and, and that's today, it's unironically, it's still one of my favorites because the premise is so simple. The this premise of that series is really the space, the bar. And and then within that, the lives and the characters and the interactions all moving around that sun, you know? And I think we were also talking a little earlier how, like, that is a good example of TV shows as series. Because if they're too specific, then you get bored, you lose interest. But if they're too broad, then they're chaotic and you don't have a desire to stay invested. You could also think about it, I think, in terms of music. For example, when a band releases an album, you hear people complaining, oh, that album that they released was so all over the place, and that track was so out of place. And same thing with classical music. I mean, you look about Bach, he was always doing those variations on a theme. And so I feel like a series for a bunch of artists, it's a very similar type of experience. 
Now, the question, though, I think that's really hard for a lot of people with the series is how do you get the idea? Because once you have the idea, yeah, there are challenges, but it's finding the right idea that you think you can sustain for a long period of time. So, Lauren, for example, you did this series of socks. How did you get the inspiration for that? I was fresh out of college and felt that I was being pressured, had lots of voices in my head to make very serious work, you know, work that had a lot of intellectual stuff going on or like a certain kind of abstraction. And I was wearing these socks and they were mismatched and I just found a lot of joy in that. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to paint these socks. Like, I just want to do something fun. And it wasn't really a conscious choice to make a series. It was just I had my eye on this particular thing. And then the next time I was wearing or saw a pair of socks that I really liked, is I thought about, oh, I made this one painting of these socks. I really got some enjoyment out of it. Maybe I'll pursue this a little further. Maybe I'll do this next set. Uh, Teresa Bailey is asking in the chat, what is the definition of fine art? All right, that'd probably take 10 streams for us to really dig into, but just for the time we have in a nutshell, I would say fine art would be something that's shown in a gallery, something that's shown in a museum. For example, Alex, you've done a ton of illustrations and I would assume that your intent for these is for them to be published in a book or in a newspaper. Am I accurate? Tell me if I'm totally off. No, you are correct, but it hits on how that's a very complex question because actually a lot of these images have sold by being in a gallery setting. So that makes it all very confusing. <laughs> so it's a complicated question, Teresa, but that's the most shallow base version that we're going to give to you right now. Let's see. WC is saying, I'm not an artist, I'm a composer. I've written song cycles based on multiple extended poems. Each song is usually quite different depending on the section oh. of text that I choose to set. Yeah, that's a great way, I think, to create a structure for something to follow because this does happen a lot where people start something and they get excited with it and then a month later, you sort of feel like, mm, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. And now, Lauren, your sock series has sort of been an off and on series for you. How do you explain that? Yeah, I'm honestly surprised that people consider it a series because I don't really. It's When I think of a series, I think of something that Alex or you do where you set these these goals for yourself or these rules for yourself and you follow it for this specific period of time. The socks I have sat down and picked up over the course of, wow, I think I did that painting in 2016, so four years. So it's this accumulation, but it's not something that I'm really thinking about intensely for a short duration of time or even a long duration of time it's uh, uh it, it really is off and on has developed into a thing just because i keep going back to a similar framework amongst my other artwork but see one of the reasons why we made this stream with three of us is to demonstrate that there's no correct way to do a series i mean sure I did a series of 50 self-portraits many years ago, and it was very premeditated. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 50 of them. They're all going to be three feet by four feet. They're going to be based on this. I mean, I felt like I was planning some military operation. It was so scientific the way I went about making it that for me, actually, Lauren, it's really refreshing to hear that you can make a series without being so structured about it. I don't know, what do you think, Alex? Because you're very much a planner like me, but I also think that your rhythm is so different than mine. Like, how would you describe how you develop the Murder on the Orient Express series? So for that one, the framework of it being illustrations of a novel made it easy for me, where I always structure it as, okay, so I picture opening the book and you have 
images of all the characters. So that's character portraits, making sure they fit in the same world. And then three to five interior illustrations that I wanted black and white, like pencil style. And how of the whole story, I'm thinking, how do I pick those five? So I want kind of that arc of the story arc to be reflected in the images. I don't want every image to be from the same chapter. I want it evenly dispersed. Cool. We've got a question from John Murph. I want to do a body of work. Would it require that I would need to be an expert in that subject matter? Like if I painted Jesus, would I need to be well-versed in the Bible? Lauren, why don't you answer that question? That's an awesome question. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think that you can approach this. I, I think part of doing a series that is really, really cool is that you can start out as a total noob, a total novice, not knowing anything. And in the process of making the series, you're doing all of this research. It, it becomes a part of the series itself. And so you can use the series to then become an expert. I, I think that that is actually the most impar important part of doing a series is you don't go in knowing everything. It certainly helps if you know a little bit and you definitely have to go in with the intention of learning. I would say it's, it's not a good idea to do a series if you don't want to learn. But I think that for the sake of gaining some knowledge, both about Jesus and your relationship with Jesus and painting Jesus, you, you, all you need to go into is, or all you need uh, for yourself to do that series is that desire to learn. At the same time, though, I will say that there are certain stories that are much tougher to do than others. The Bible is definitely one of them. I mean, I know Barry Mosher, who is a very famous illustrator. He's been around forever and ever. He actually did illustrate the Bible several years ago and got totally demolished by the critics. They hated it. And honestly, I think a big part of the reason they hated it was because it was the Bible. And I feel like if he'd illustrated something else, maybe they wouldn't have given him such a hard time. I mean, like Alex, when you did Murder on the Orient Express, did you feel that that was a really hard subject that you had to do research or did you feel like you could be looser with it? It is. So I, I love Agatha Christie stories, but Murder on the Orient Express is by far not my favorite. So that was something like I needed to give myself a project that wasn't as precious to me that I felt okay with messing with. Um, but yeah, even in an example of this, even something not as lofty as say the Bible for this, like diving in, researching period clothing, um, different personalities of the characters, what would this person wear or not wear um, has been a very fun thing. And like Lauren was talking about of just that constant learning, like anytime I hang out with friends after studio, you knew I was doing like series research because like, guys, did you know there was this article of clothing in the 40s that was like, a, but like, you know, it's just kooky. And yeah, so it will kind of take over your whole life if you let it. And that's how you know that you've really like hit pay dirt. You know, that's how you know you've had a good series. And I think another way that you can do a series, which is something that I did, was to really do a series based on your own personal experience. So this is a series of self-portraits that I did many years ago, and it was based on my personal experience with depression, in which case you don't have to do any research because you're like, this is all about me. I can talk about this all day. And so I think it's a great example that in terms of ideas, there really are advantages and disadvantages to everything that you talk about, because I think the danger with personal narratives is that it becomes almost self-indulgent at some point that you're trying to tell a story and why should anybody care about your personal story? How are you going to make them want to feel something from that artwork? So that is very, very tricky as well. Slepnir is asking, how can you keep it fresh without getting tired of it? Lauren, what do you think? So... Actually, I think one of the most interesting parts of doing a series or doing a very concentrated series 
is that point where you get 50 drawings in and you're starting to hate everything that you do and it starts feeling really boring because then that comes the moment where you kind of break and all of your preconceptions of what your subject is and who you are and how you relate to your subject and how you relate to your art, they kind of fall apart because you're just getting tired of it. You just want something else. And so I think what helps is to just stick with it, keep working, uh, don't just drop it because you'll start to be weird and kind of throw things in. I think um, one thing that has helped me is to use different materials, use different color palettes that are, are challenging to me. Like I, I hate using the color brown. So I've forced myself to use the color brown. Materials are a good place to start, but then you can also think about uh, perspectives, both conceptual and uh, visual, compositional. I mean, I'll tell you, Slepnir, what really helped me get through this bunch of portraits was literally the number, 50. I just said, you gotta do it. You can't say you're gonna do 50 and make 39. That's gonna be really dumb. And so I feel like for me, having a super concrete number like that was very, very helpful. And it also helps, I think, to sometimes set almost rules for the series. For example, if you guys look at the show that I had of the series, you'll notice that every single portrait is the exact same size and they're all heads. So I knew every single time I sat down, it's going to be a head, it's going to be this big, and it's going to be in this material. And that's really nice because it takes away some of the stress of feeling like you have to reinvent yourself every single time. And it becomes not automatic, but it feels more natural than, oh, I got to come up with something new every single time. And for me, that lifted the pressure. Now, Alex, for you, color is such a big part of your practice. Like, did you think about establishing a color scheme for yours or have you done that in the past? Um, I happen, in fact, I intentionally don't do that, where if, for this one, a couple parts of the series are black and white in pencil, and some of them are in color, and I've intentionally wanted each image to be a different kind of color setting. Um, so I'd say that's an example where it can kind of push the boundaries of not all being physically the same. They do all have the same dimensions. Um, I think Clara and for Lauren as well, what fits with all of them is that phrase of like, as long as they belong in the same world, quote unquote, like that I say that based on the illustration world because yeah, I'm drawing and painting like a physical fantasy space and everything has to make sense together. Um, but yeah, I think in all series, that phrase of making it in the same world is a good unifier for it. Yeah, because I think Alex, one of the reasons you're getting away with very different types of color schemes is simply because you have the same characters literally in all these images. And so the style of those characters being consistent lets you get away with playing around with your color scheme. And so Slepnir, were you were asking earlier about keeping it fresh, it's like there are some things you can mess with, but you can't mess with everything. Like that really is where things start to fall apart and get really chaotic. CCH5 says, how do you know if your idea is big enough that it needs to be a series? Do you just decide after you work on a group of pieces? Lauren, what do you think? I think this sorts itself out organically a lot of the time. There have definitely been times in this. I love that we have this contrast between all three of us because the way that you guys work, like for instance, Clara, where you do 50 drawings and you set that number ahead of time. If I try and do that, I just fail. I fail after four. I tried to do a series of 12 geese, one for every month, paint the same goose every month. I only got up to number four. So I think the if, if you start to really truly get bored of it and you are not feeling it as a whole anymore, like you can drop it, that is okay. Maybe it doesn't need to be that long. But if you are specifically looking at a, a big subject and you feel like there's more there, I think there's a difference between that feeling of feeling uh, tired, fatigued in the middle because it's a big process, but knowing that there's still more out there versus feeling bored and unenthused and like you've hit a dead end. 
And also, you can take a break from your series. It's nothing to say that, oh, if you're doing a series, then you must work on it every single day for a whole year. I mean, Lauren, what's the time frame of all of your sock paintings? Did you do it once every other month? Like, what was the spacing of it? Oh, I yeah, I do a few of them a year. That's not... And they, I didn't have any particular timeline for them. It was more like, oh, hey, I feel like doing another sock. Oh, hey, I feel like doing another shoe. And this this stuff kind of sorts it, it's stuff, ah, this stuff kind of sorts itself out naturally again. Like I, I don't do this just with the socks. I do it with birds. I do it with uh, my torso drawings. I do it with my, my cat paintings. They all, it's this alternation of, of exercises of muscle groups and they all are growing at the same time. Let's see, Seven Angelic is saying, how do you know how big a series should be? Like is five a series, is 50 or both? That's a really good question because series can really be anything. But yeah, I mean, you have to get to a point where it's like, eh, that's not a series. So Alex, is it a is there a cutoff point with the number or how do you know? Yes, this is substantial. Enough. <laughs> this is, it's making me wish there was like a term for like a mini series where like, I would say that two is not a series. I would say the smallest series I can think of is three, but then again, I almost want to place three to five as a mini series. Um, ones that are almost better as exercises for you as an artist rather than actually creating a body to show. What do you guys feel about that? Because that's sometimes I work and I realize I get three images in and I realize like, that's it. Like I've explored it. I've completed that concept and I flushed it out. And then you have ones like the Orient Express, which I too have been working on and off on for a couple years now, like sometimes redoing even whole paintings. So for me, I feel like I define it in terms of if I were going to have a gallery show, is this enough work to fill the gallery by myself? Now, granted, galleries are all different sizes. I've shown in some that are smaller than my living room, but you have to think about it that way, because if you can't fill a gallery by yourself, that's not really, at least in the fine arts world, if you're a gallery artist, that's not going to cut it. I don't know, Lauren, do you have a number or what do you think? Yeah, I'm probably between you and Alex. I feel that filling a gallery is not necessary, as Alex is saying, to uh, fully pursue an idea. I, I think that there are definitely uh, subjects that only take like five pieces to, to work into. And I have seen shows that show several series of work. I think that's fine. Um, I also think that with a gallery, again, there is, I, I think that there is a slight difference between a body of work and a series, at least in my dictionary of terms or language, a series is something that is much more defined and structured as, and I think of your work, Clara, actually, where it is all of these heads, all of the same size, all of the same subject matter. I think a body of work is similar to a series in that it will tackle the same concept or story, but it is a little bit looser. You'll see like little tangents that come back to a whole. So that, I, I, I think a body of work should fill a gallery. A series can be part of a body of work. Mm, I love that a lot. Yeah. We have a question from Lee Lani Chu. I made a series of eight collages. I started by making two pieces that looked unrelated, used the rest of the six to bridge the gap between one and eight. Thoughts on this approach? Alex, why don't you take this one? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, personally, it makes me think of how I make the series is where to keep it fresh for me I don't map out and plan all of the drawings at the same time I kind of like finish it and then move on and it becomes like a, a puzzle where it gets simultaneously harder and easier the closer I get to finishing it where it's like I'll like I'll joke with other artist friends that it's like the hardest one in a series to do is the second one 
Like, because the first one, you can do anything you want. By the third one, you're like, okay, now it's part of this family. But the second one, it's like, okay, what's different? What's going to change? So, yeah, I think that's a really cool method. I think it's great. I mean, however you can bridge the gaps and formulate those connections, good for you. I mean, there's no specific way that is correct here. Like this series that I did, I called it Scars That Speak, lasted literally two months. <laughs> it was the shortest series I've ever done in my life. Now, the series that I showed you guys before of the 50 portraits, I worked on this portrait series and then also sculptures and prints afterwards of the same body of work for four years. And so even within the same artist, you can have a situation where you're just working in a completely different rhythm because this project, I always kept saying, oh, I'll come back to it. I just never did. I just did not have a compelling reason to do that. And that's fine. You just have to go with what the project is saying to you. Neil is asking, isn't three called a triptych? It is, but a triptych is very specific in that it's considered to be a single artwork, but it has three different pieces to it. So that's not quite the same thing as a series. And Michael is asking, how many portraits did you end up making for the 50 portrait series? That's a good question. I actually ended up making 65 because <laughs> the same thing happened that Alex mentioned that the beginning portraits I did did not match the ones at the end. And so I ended up removing a whole bunch that I didn't like and made more than what I really technically needed to make. But I felt better about that in the end. Annie is asking, do series usually have an order? They supposed to be viewed sequentially or can they just be a chunk? Lauren, what do you think? In, in my world, generally, they, they can be uh, viewed as a chunk and you can install them however you want. Uh, I, I'm working as a painter, so the things that I'm doing are like all over the place, really. My only area where they're not like that is when I'm working on the series of birds for my calendar, in which case it's based off of January, February, March, April, May, and you, you view those in that order. But I think my considerations are much more facial and less temporal when I'm installing a series. Mm. Neil is asking, any tips on how to actually start? That's a great question because I think for a lot of people, it's very intimidating to start something like this because it feels so big. So Alex, if you were to start a series, like let's say you've got an idea right now, what would be the first thing that you did to start that series? First thing would be to not pick up a pen or pencil. Like I would, well, I guess pen, I write about it, journal about it and kind of explore why you're interested. And I think that for me, nine times out of 10, that has helped me identify when a series doesn't have enough meat in it for me. Like if I like start writing about it and kind of researching it and doing a lot of the background work for it, and I get really jazzed about it. That's how I know. And then the place to start, depending on the type of series, um, I would say starting with usual thumbnails, getting those down. And I like the concept for me of starting with one image and then exploring from that. Um, I don't know what you guys think about it. Well, I'll tell you, I'm the same way, Alex. I do not start with sketches. For me, it's writing for three months, maybe thinking and taking notes and saying, is this really have the potential? And it may not be something that I work on every day. It just could be something that I'm toying with at the back of my brain when I feel like it. And yeah, that sounds like I'm just goofing off, but I think some stories and ideas, you need that time for the stories to marinate and to say, okay, is this really worth it? So it's not so much that you start the actual making right away, but that you really do have to think about it. I don't know, like Lauren, did you just pick up a brush and start painting socks? Like, how did you start this? Well, that's the thing too, is I think I actually, my experience does mirror you guys' experience with all that because yes, I did just pick up a brush and make a painting of socks, but I had to talk with my peers a lot and write about what I was making in studio to get to the point where I could recognize that 
oh, this is a part of my practice. Oh, I have a line of thought or a line of paintings here that maybe I should pursue. It, it definitely wasn't like, oh, I am sitting down and making 80 thumbnails of socks. That's not how it was at all. And I honestly don't even recommend that because that feels, that really makes things tight. It's, it's kind of an artificial way of getting into something that is a very organic process, even though there are a lot of rules to it. Mm. Now, another thing I think to consider as well is how do you actually work on the pieces? Okay, so I had 50 drawings that I had to do. I did not make a drawing, finish it, make a drawing, finish it. I did not do that for a very particular reason. And actually, I do have this studio shot and you can see I was working four or five drawings at the same time. Because I think you guys have all been there. You know, you work on a drawing, you just are sick to death of it. And the advantage when you work on multiple pieces at the same time is you just jump to another one. You get sick of that one. You jump to another one. Is that something you've ever done before, Alex? What's funny is it reminds me of, I've never thought of them in terms of a series, but working on comics in graphic novel format. And there's like a trick of the trade where when you're inking, like after you're done with the pencil, you ink the comic. And there's advice to not start with page one and end with page 10, but to start with page five and then do page three and then do page seven and then do page four so that your growth is dispersed throughout. Um, and that's, I think, how I manage series is I do kind of buckle down and finish one, move on to the next. But I'll really, I'll, I'll very often go back and redo them. Art, what is this? Art Ho M Bag? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your username. How do you come up with a title for a series? Because I got a few ideas, but nothing quite sounds right. Well, Laura, do you have a title for your sock series? I wasn't sure if you did. No. I don't think I have a, I'm so bad at naming things, Clara, but that that's not to say the series shouldn't have a name. I definitely think they should, or at least for that I have the same problem for gallery shows like what do you call the show it usually takes a long time I look at the thesaurus a lot honestly when I'm trying to find titles and I think of a word that I like and then I try to find a similar word to the word that I like and then that can be the show mm. I mean, I'll tell you, I think that everybody struggles to title their artwork. I mean, we probably should do a stream on that at some point. I mean, I titled the series of self-portraits Falling, and that was an image that had been in my head for a long time, feeling when I was depressed that I was falling. And so it actually didn't really have anything to do with the imagery of the portrait, but it was something that went deeper in terms of the concept. I would just say, don't put pressure on yourself to say, I have to come up with a title now. It's fine if it goes unnamed for a while. And eventually I think something does emerge. So I would just say, don't force it. I don't think it's necessary for you to do that. Guys, we have an art prof share today. And art prof share is where you guys create an artwork in reaction to one of our videos. And today, the art prof share is Leston Buell. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but Leston actually sent us two different portraits. So we have one here, which is in black and white, and we have another one here, which is in color. And if you guys go down to the video description below, you can see what Leston talks about. And so Leston explains that he watched the video on self-portrait drawing with crayon, and it gave him the idea to do Neocolor 1 crayons. And he said that the medium showed in the tutorial that you could make beautiful works. Techniques that he learned from the video was working in layers, applying fixative spray between them, going between the different layers, and working on something other than white paper because Oftentimes, I think with a lot of the color drawing materials, the white paper can be really challenging to work on. And Leston says the subject is from their imagination and working in crayon allowed them to experiment with color, light and dark in new ways. Lauren, what is your take on Leston's drawings? 
Well, first of all, I love that there are two. I love that you can contrast between the two and you really get a sense of both like the, like the uh, broad composition and value and those playing off of each other between the two pieces. I, I think it's really interesting using two like rather pointed materials. You know, you've got like this uh, pencil for one and then you've got like the neo colors for the other and seeing how the mark making differs between them. I think you can learn a lot just by looking at the two pieces next to each other. Cool. We have Lustin in the chat live with us. Thank you so much for joining. And wow, miracle of miracles. I pronounced Lustin's name correctly. That's got to be like the first of the month. <laughs> but Alex, what's your take? What do you think about Lustin's pieces? Especially with the color one, I love the really sophisticated layering of the colors. Um, in the face, it just like that. You can just tell in the close-ups as you zoom in of just like a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, a little bit of yellow, and it just helps to form this shape and space there in a really satisfying way, which for me with colored pencil is my brain does not work that way. Like <laughs> it, it can work that way with paint, but with colored pencil, I'm like, no, this does not layer. But yeah, so it's a really cool technique. Lesson, what I really like about the color piece, and actually it is happening in the black and white piece as well, is how massive and volumetric the hair feels because I think people are very afraid to do that with hair because they think about, oh, hair is all these little tiny hairs. I got to draw every single one. And I just feel like the hair has such presence and so much personality that in some ways almost eclipses the face. And I think that's great because a lot of people do tend to put all the emphasis on the face to the point that everything becomes really unimportant. So I really enjoy that dynamic that you created in this piece. If you guys made something in reaction to one of our tutorials, go to artprof.org, click on tutorials. The purple button will take you to the Artprof Share submission form, and you guys can submit and be considered for a YouTube shout out. Or if you guys just want to show us on Instagram, we're always happy to see what you guys are up to. Just tag us art.prof, use hashtag artprofshare, and we'll take a look. Join us in the Discord after the post live stream. It'll just be me tonight. You'll get Lauren and Alex at some other time, but I will be in the post live streams channel to hang out with you guys. Please subscribe to our channel and hang out with the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who keep the lights on here at Art Prof. Thank you so much to all of you guys in the chat who contributed, gave us all of your comments, asked us questions. And thank you to Spiel, who says, love you, Claire. You're a hot mess of a prof, but you're my hot mess. Awesome. I will be your hot mess. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> anyway, guys, everybody stay safe. We'll see you next.